Now the promise of DeFi is actually very exciting. The idea of having a protocol and an open system where no one is in charge, it's completely decentralized, it's permissionless, it cannot be shut down or censored. Now, of course, Bitcoin was the first protocol to do this in a truly decentralized manner. And as such, it contains all the promise of DeFi. But when I hear about other altcoins trying to do this or tokens that are built on top of the Ethereum blockchain, all I can think of is children playing dress up. Now, it's very cute when children do it, but it's not as cute when altcoin promoters try to do it in order to dump their bags on you. So this is the problem with DeFi. This is These are protocols that steal the Bitcoin promise and pretend to try to recreate its decentralized nature. But they end up being very scammy, they're very centralized, and they can be turned off just by a single person. These are new protocols that uh, are looking at their, their older brother or their parent who wears a suit and is six feet tall and they're putting on the adult clothing and trying to pretend to be like Bitcoin. But it's very transparent. If you, if you have a headquarters, if you have a CEO, if you have a legal team, if your protocol can just be turned off overnight, this shows that you're not decentralized at all. There is a centralized leader in charge. I'll give you two headlines that you're never gonna see with Bitcoin. SEC raids Bitcoin headquarters. Of course, there is no Bitcoin headquarters. There's no center to Bitcoin or a Bitcoin CEO has been detained for questioning. These are things that can never happen because there is no Bitcoin headquarters. There is no Bitcoin CEO. You can have an entire country like China expel all the Bitcoin miners and forbid the use of Bitcoin. It doesn't matter. Everything just moves and uh, there's, no, there's no center to the Bitcoin protocol. By contrast, we have all these DeFi protocols that can be investigated by the SEC or can just be turned off overnight if something happens with the dev team. The really unique thing about Bitcoin is it's something that can only happen once. You can only create true digital scarcity the first time. After that, everything is an additional knockoff. You can only create the Mona Lisa once. Everything after that is just a copy and it doesn't have the same long-term enduring value. And one of the very special things about Bitcoin is it was launched by an unknown founder who disappeared very early on in the project, Satoshi Nakamoto. And it's a real gift he gave the world because he cannot be detained now. He is not a, a, a single point of failure for the protocol. And Bitcoin also had the unique advantage that it grew very slowly under the radar of governments and central banks. It's now reached the point, it's like a virus, it's spread everywhere and it cannot be stopped. All these DeFi protocols, all these DeFi tokens, including Ethereum itself, which is highly, highly centralized. They had a very large pre-mine. There are a lot of insider holders that control the path of development. They have a very prominent co-founder who's still around, Vitalik Buterin, obviously. These things can be shut down or co-opted. They can be taken over by the government. By contrast, Bitcoin began, as we said, under the radar and spread all around the world in a truly decentralized manner. It's not like Cover, it's not like DAO Maker, MakerDAO, or Uniswap, or even Ethereum itself. It's truly decentralized, and at this point, it cannot be stopped. This is why Bitcoin is such an important asset to own, in my opinion. Ethereum's a scammy coin with a huge pre-mine. It has a centralized leader in the form of Vitalik, who has a bully pulpit to drive development forward. He's done rollbacks and reverse transactions, so it's not really an immutable blockchain. Also, Ethereum can be shut down, as we've said, by just making two phone calls. If the government wanted to do this, one phone call to Infura and another phone call to Amazon Web Services, AWS. We could also talk about how Ethereum has really been changing its marketing over the years. It went from world computer to programmable store value, ICOs, dApps, and now DeFi. There's nothing decentralized about this and how people can think that it is, um, they're really deluding themselves. The only truly decentralized protocol out there that can never be paused is the Bitcoin network. That is DeFi 101. That's the original decentralized finance. It's censorship resistant. It's permissionless. Anyone can plug into the network and no one can unplug 
the network. You can un unplug the miners in China, like this the Chinese Communist Party did, but they just make their way to other countries and the hash rate adjusts, but Bitcoin keeps chugging along. There's no pause button on DeFi built on Bitcoin. You cannot build a new decentralized financial system on top of a centralized base layer, whether that base layer is Ethereum, where most of DeFi is currently being built, or something like Cardano. You cannot build DeFi on top of CeFi. Ethereum is run by a centralized leader, as we've said, Vitalik Buterin, who has this bully pulpit to control Ethereum's forward path. People pretend that there's this democracy among the developers, but it really is Vitalik leading the charge. He's the public figurehead and he has the bully pulpit. He's also someone who has a history of having done rollbacks, for example, in 2016, when he reversed some Ethereum transactions. So this shows you the power of a crypto dictator. It also shows you when you have a centralized leader that there is a centralized point of failure. That's one of the most dangerous things about building DeFi on something like Ethereum. Also, Ethereum has done one hard fork after another. A hard fork is just a software update that's not backwards compatible. And so it really does drag everyone along with it. Whereas with Bitcoin, you could be Rip Van Winkle. You could store your Bitcoin, go to sleep, wake up, uh, let's call it 10 or 11 years later since the uh, founding of Bitcoin, and your Bitcoin would still work fine. You'd be able to move it. With Ethereum, you can never sleep because these hard forks, you're basically forced to go along with them. The way Bitcoin upgrades is through soft forks. And again, you could be Rip Van Winkle, fall asleep and not have to worry about uh, what happens with Bitcoin. Whereas Ethereum, you really have to stay up on the calendar because it's really one hard fork after another. It's very difficult to do a hard fork when you don't have a centralized leader like Ethereum does. Ethereum is highly, highly dependent on Infura, which is a, uh, a corporation and they provide a lot of the um, the infrastructure and backbone for uh, for Ethereum. Infura itself is built on top of AWS, Amazon Web Services, so it's really centralization on top of centralization. And when Infura goes down, there are major, major problems that happen with the Ethereum network. You can imagine that if the government, let's say the US government, got tired of people trading in DeFi, trading assets without having to go through KYC, which is uh, know, your, know your customer, which all brokerages have to put you through. What if the government decides to pull the plug on this? They decide that this is bypassing the current system. How do they do that? They just make two phone calls. They make one phone call to Infura. They make another phone call to Amazon and Ethereum will be completely crippled. So not only does the government have a way of doing this, they would have a very plausible motive to do it as well, to shut down, uh, to shut down DeFi. Ethereum's move from one consensus mechanism to another, from proof of work to proof of stake. I find it unbelievable that people aren't more scared of this, especially Ethereum's. Changing consensus mechanisms really is like jumping from one airplane to another mid-air. Bitcoin did something very different on the ground. Satoshi made sure he had a very strong system. He could have chosen proof of stake. He was a very smart guy. He chose proof of work. Ethereum is being bogged down with high fees. And so, uh, and they also just cannot, cannot compete at the level of hash rate with Bitcoin. So they are deciding to move to a different consensus system. And they're doing this really mid-air. This is one reason I, I like Bitcoin. I know something like this is never going to happen, that the consensus mechanism is never going to be changed because there is no centralized leader that pushes for these things. Ethereum simply does not have the same credible monetary history that Bitcoin does. They've changed their monetary policy uh, and their issuance uh, many times over history, whereas Bitcoin is very old and conservative and boring. But this is what you want for a new form of money. You don't want something that has been changed many, many times. Asserting that you are decentralized or that you're moving towards decentralization does not mean that it will happen or that you are decentralized. By contrast, Bitcoin's future monetary issuance, the number of uh, coins that are issued per block, it goes down, it's halved every four years. Everyone knows this issuance schedule and so they can plan for it. And there really is a hard cap as well, 21 million. One big problem, Ethereum is already so centralized, 
but proof of stake is inherently centralizing. The rich get richer since all you need to do is sit back and get paid. By contrast, under proof of work, Bitcoin miners really need to engage with capitalism. They need to fight to find the lowest for uh, the lowest cost form of energy. They need to innovate in terms of mining machines that are faster and use a less electricity. This is a highly competitive, highly industrialized field, as it should be. Proof of stake is basically just people who already have a lot of ETH, and they just sit back and get to earn more ETH. This is too much like the billionaire fiat system. By contrast, proof of work, anyone can become a miner. And just because you've been a miner for the last 10 years doesn't mean your place is secured. You could be kicked out at any time. We saw what's happened to a lot of Bitcoin miners in China. There's no guarantee that Ethereum will be around uh, in a few years from now or have its current form. Who knows how much it could be modified by then. So the coolest parts of DeFi will be borrowed and built on Bitcoin, on the Bitcoin blockchain or on a Bitcoin sidechain. They'll be ported over. And so that cool new altcoin feature, token feature, DeFi feature that you're talking about, if it really is worth having, will eventually be absorbed by Bitcoin. There's another problem. If you build DeFi on a centralized system like ETH, even if it succeeds, which is not at all guaranteed, as we've been saying, a new DeFi system built on a centralized platform will eventually be co-opted or captured by the existing system. Something that's centralized can easily be captured. This is what happened with the gold standard. All the gold was already sitting in government vaults and banks, so it's very easy to, uh, to confiscate gold from Americans and also to move away from the gold system. Once you own all the gold, you can decide to pivot.